me start with a couple of questions for you. Do you know anyone who's never watched TV, never seen a movie, never read a book? Of course not. So let me ask you one more question. Do you know someone, maybe even in your own family, who's never played a video game? I bet you do. So if you're keen on playing multiplayer or enjoying some of the classic games on the Switch, you're getting a solid set of benefits for a little more than what some companies charge for a month of their subscriptions. One thing that's become abundantly clear as I've researched for this video and started to compare prices and what you get is that Xbox and Sony are charging a shit ton of money for not a lot of value. As a base consumer who's not paying for any sort of subscription, I'd put Xbox ahead of other consoles purely because they offer cloud saves for free, which really should be the standard in 2024. I've done a price comparison of how expensive If you want to get the most expensive version of Nintendo Switch Online, to get the equivalent If you want to get the most expensive version of Switch Online for a year, which is the expansion pack version, to get the equivalent highest tier from PlayStation is going to cost you more than three times if you're going to break down each sub subscribe If you're going to break down each of the subscriptions into what they really offer, all three subscriptions are going to give you cloud saves, discounts, exclusive digital content, and a lot. In this video, I'm going to talk about each game individually and then the game as a whole. And for context, I played all the games except soccer, both globally and locally with my partner with soccer being played online only by myself since it required four Joy-Cons for local. One of, if not the most popular game released as part of Wii Sports, tennis had to make a comeback as part of Nintendo Switch Sports. In terms of how the controls worked, gameplay was pretty similar to Wii Sports, but it felt disappointing that the spam swinging from Wii Sports didn't make a return. The global mode felt more limited than local play as you had no choice of how long your matches were and also scoring was different in global mode versus local with global using a normal scoring mode whilst local used proper tennis scoring. This wasn't a huge deal but I found it weird that it was inconsistent given that Wii Sports did use proper tennis scoring. The lack of the training modes is a shame as I had a lot of fun playing these modes as a kid especially when I was playing solo but overall it's tennis on the Switch, nothing more nothing less. Also originally released as part of Wii Sports, bowling in Switch Sports makes some improvements, but also feels like a step backwards. Compared to the original, the location is fantastic. It feels so much more alive and has a great energy about it. This is something that Wii Sports Resort did really, really well. I'm really glad to see Nintendo has kept this going. In global mode, you're randomly placed into either a standard or special bowling game and in a survival format, where if you're outside of the top half of the competitors, you're out. Locally, you have a choice of which mode to play and it's standard bowling with the option to take turns or bowl simultaneously. The addition of being able to bowl simultaneously is a nice change as it really helps keep the games moving and keep you engaged. Survival mode is a change I'm not really a big fan of though. It feels kind of odd and can end up with players being left out if one player gets knocked out whilst another stays in. And unfortunately, 100 pin mode hasn't made a return, which is really disappointing as again, this was a favorite mode of mine as a kid. A more minor but really disappointing change is that you can't bolt backwards anymore and make the characters behind you jump. This was iconic when I was a kid and it really takes away a lot of the character from the game so overall this is a really shit change. Overall bowling's pretty solid and the special mode is pretty fun as it adds a new challenge but the lack of the 100 pin mode and other features makes bowling feel incomplete and light on content. Golf was originally released as part of Wii Sports. But with Wii Sports Resort, significant improvements were made to the accuracy of gameplay with the introduction of the Wii Motion Plus. Global mode once again puts you in a 3 round up to 5 hole survival mode, whilst local lets you choose between 3, 9 and 18 holes. There was a lack of consistency between the global and local modes which was somewhat annoying. I feel like you should have been able to choose longer modes for golf and global mode but I'm sure there's a reason behind it. 
They did make a lot of effort though to explain how the scoring system works, which was a nice touch, and I'm a big fan of Nintendo adding some education for how the scoring of each game works within Wii Sports and Nintendo Switch Sports. In the global mode, all players go at once, whilst in local mode, as was done in Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resorts, players take turns based on who's furthest from the hole. Having everyone go at once does feel kind of chaotic, but makes sense for online play, so I understand why this was done. The holes I played were really awesome, they were very pretty and thought out, and had a lot of detail to them as well, which was really, really nice. The Wii Sports Resort flying mode through the golf course would be super cool, like they had in Wii Sports Resort, so I'm a little disappointed there's no flying in this game. Overall though, golf is still golf, it's definitely one of the better sports in this game, but there's room for improvement. Like I said, having more options in the global mode would be one of the bigger and better changes they could make. Sword fighting was introduced as part of Wii Sports Resort, and was one of my favourites back in that game. Of all the games though in Nintendo Switch Sports, this was the most consistent between the local and global modes, both having the same options for fighting styles. During my playtime, I played using the sword and twin sword styles. Twin swords felt really janky to use, they had a tendency to overlap on the screen when my hands were somewhat close together, which annoyed me more than it probably should have, but still pretty distracting. I'll preface this next comment with the fact my internet's pretty shit, so it may have played a part in this, but I feel like of all the games in Switch Sports, this is the worst one for online multiplayer. Latency plays a huge role in this game when you're playing online, and I felt a lot of the time I was getting away with shots I didn't deserve. Locally though, it felt good to play, I didn't feel like I was getting away with as many shots. Again, the location looks great and feels very alive. I've got a lot of nostalgia for the original outdoor location, but this is almost as good. Though sword fighting is the shortest game in Switch Sports, it's really good, it plays really well, and I'm glad to see it return. When they first made the announcement in the Nintendo Direct, Badminton was the game I was least excited for. Though it's great to see representation of different sports, having two racket sports that play relatively similarly in the same game, when the lineup of sports is already quite small, seems quite overkill. Objectively the game plays quite well, it's another accurate translation of a sport into a video game format, and I've got no complaints there. I will say that it does seem kind of strange to limit badminton to two players when badminton in real life supports doubles, and it's that decision that really leads me to believe that badminton should have been replaced with a different sport that was less similar to tennis. In a larger lineup of sports such as what they had in Wii Sports Resort, I don't think this game would be out of place. Though I was relatively indifferent when they first announced this, in my opinion Sock is the most exciting new introduction to the series. One of the things that made Wii Sports so great even now is that it had real character. In tennis you could spam your racket, and in bowling you could throw the ball backwards and the people behind you would react, and in most of the sports they included in Switch Sport, they really took this character away. Soccer on the other hand lets you fall over when you try kick both legs at the same time. And though it's a really minor detail, and it does make sense in terms of how the gameplay works, flopping around on the menu screen before your game starts looks stupid and is kind of fun. Global's relatively limited in terms of the modes you can pick from, but local play has four pretty distinct modes, which is really nice to see, and it's obviously the game that they've put the most effort and attention into. Overall, Soccer is a fantastic new addition to the series, and I'm really happy to see it was included in Switch Sports. Volleyball's the last new introduction to the series, and is once again a very well translated game. The global and local modes play pretty similarly to tennis, global has no options but local lets you choose teams and CPU difficulty. As far as the games included in Switch Sports go, volleyball would arguably be the most complex and requires the most skill. You can serve, bump, set, spike and block, which all have their own movements and timings, and the timing and accuracy of your movements was also a lot more important in this game. It was much more obvious when you messed up. This is a really fun game to play and it's really really solid, but I can see this game being a struggle for some players, making it one of the less accessible sports in the game. Basketball is the only game in Switch Sports that was originally introduced in Wii Sports Resort, and unlike in Wii Sports Resort, basketball's main mode is a 2v2 version of half court basketball rather than 3v3, and will only let you control your character instead of controlling whoever has the ball, which changes the gameplay quite significantly from Wii Sports Resort. Switch Sports also brings back the 3 point challenge mode from Wii Sports Resort, but also adds 3 point contests for 2 to 4 players, and 5 streak battle also for up to 4 players, where players race to be the first to score 5 free throws in a row. 
2v2 is the only mode available for global play, the other three modes being available for local play only. At its core, basketball in Switch Sports is basically the same as Wii Sports Resort. It's half-court basketball where one team plays offense and the other plays defense, switching every time a shot is taken or the ball is stolen. In Switch Sports, the games are up to 90 seconds long compared to 3 minutes of Wii Sports Resort, or they end when a team reaches 12 points. The most notable difference in Switch Sports, as I said already, is that you control your character even when you don't have the ball. Meaning instead of in Wii Sports Resort, when you pass the ball, you take over that me, you remain in control of your character, which allows you to reposition yourself to take shots and catch passes when your teammate is being blocked. Dunking is also in Switch Sports, but is significantly harder to achieve than in Wii Sports Resort, as you have to be completely alone and in a certain area, whereas you could dunk in Wii Sports Resort with defenders around you and still have an easy time of doing so. Shooting feels a lot easier in Switch Sports compared to Wii Sports Resort, as going back to Wii Sports Resort, I struggled for the first couple minutes to even sink a shot, yet in Switch Sports, I was sinking shots almost immediately. Overall though, basketball in Switch Sports is polished, fun, and arguably the best game in the Switch Sports lineup. One of the main things that stood out to me about Switch Sports is it's really polished. The choice of art style in my opinion works really well for the game, and the world the games are set in have real character and feel alive. However, compared to Wii Sports, and especially Wii Sports Resort, Switch Sports feels light on content. Though there's more in-depth customization options due to cosmetic items that can be won from playing globally, though this isn't exactly fair to compare as Wii Sports and Resort only support Amiis, the removal of the secondary modes from the sports such as the tennis wall modes and the 100 pin mode is really disappointing and something that really should have been included to flesh the game out and give us an experience that was on par with the previous releases. As far as recommending this title to anyone, if someone's desperate for a Wii Sports experience on the Switch, Nintendo Switch Sports is as close as you're going to get. If someone's looking for a title to get their kids more active when playing games and isn't looking to spend as much money to get something like Ring Fit for 155 New Zealand dollars, at 90 bucks, Switch Sports is a more solid recommendation as it's priced slightly cheaper than your standard Nintendo release, which goes for 100 New Zealand dollars or 110 if you're getting things like Tears of the Kingdom. Switch Sports is now being included as a pack and title with the standard model of Switch and no extra cost, which makes it a much better deal for someone who's looking to pick up a Switch and as a free game that comes with your console, it's a good game, I can recommend it wholeheartedly. However, Switch Sports isn't a standout title like Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort were, especially considering Nintendo has hit it out of the park recently, with Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Tears of the Kingdom coming out last year. Support for the title also seems to have dropped off, as Nintendo no longer appears to be releasing new cosmetic items for the game, as the options available at the time of playing, were released over a year prior, and the official website hasn't had a new news update since October of 2023. The polish that Nintendo Switch Sport has does give me some hope that if Nintendo did choose to do a remake or a follow-up to Wii Sports Resort, we would see a really high quality, polished, and fantastic looking new title. And I wholeheartedly believe that it would really reach the levels that Wii Sport and Wii Sports Resort set for the series. 